and uh, and our uh, webinar today focuses on uh, data analysis, data management, and data sharing. And our guests uh, today are um, Mike Bloom, our CEO and founder of Data for Development and Open Data Company, and Marian Alam, senior a senior advisor, Open Data Company. And we welcome you. Uh, the format is uh, they will give us a presentation on a data analysis, data management, and data sharing, and then we'll have questions and answers. But before that, please uh, let me know where you're logging from. Uh, just indicate in the chat room so that we can acknowledge you and acknowledge your country. I know it's a Friday, so uh, let's do it. Um, just indicate in the chat room very quickly where you're logging from so that we can acknowledge you and your country. I can see Philippines. Thank you very much, Philippines, for the honor. I can see uh, Uganda, thank you very much. India, Zambia, Nepal, Germany, Nigeria, thank you. Pakistan, Ghana, Kenya, Libya, Ghana, Malawi, thank you. Cameroon, Zimbabwe, Seychelles, Somalia, Tanzania, South Africa, thank you very much, Tanzania. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Ethiopia, I can see the world is represented. DRC, Congo, thank you very much. Um, Let's wind up this, uh, South Africa again, South Sudan, Malawi, thank you, thank you, Somalia. Well, uh, thank you everybody, Sweden, Uganda, South Sudan, I thank you very much everyone for coming in and um, let's have uh, productive sessions. Um, if you have any questions uh, based on your work experience, you raise that uh, with our presenters. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome um, Mike Bloom, who is the CEO and the founder of Data for Development and Open Data Company to do her introduction and guide us on how this session will run. Thank you. Yes, thank you, John. I'm very happy to be here in such a universal global uh, audience from all over the world. It almost feels like a UN General Assembly uh, meeting. So uh, as John was saying, my name is uh, Mike Blom. I'm from the Netherlands. I've been working in the development aid space for the last 25 years and had many different roles uh, but the last uh, 10 years i've been engaged mostly with data uh, the ict for development uh, type of solutions and um, specifically open data and i'm going to be speaking about what we do today with open data in the development sector uh, marianne can you please introduce yourself briefly Yes, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marianne Alam. Uh, I am the... I'm also uh, working, I started in the development sector as well, and I have joined uh, Data for Development and the Open Data Company to uh, untangle the uh, issue with the data and start uh, increase the awareness of and the importance of using uh, open data to make data-driven decisions. So I will be co-hosting here with uh, Maike. If you have any question, I will also uh, be happy to answer them in the chat. Thank you. Have a good uh, presentation. Yes. Thank you, Marianne. I'm going to uh, share my screen now. Uh, share the presentation. Can you all see it? Yes. yes. Yes, it's coming. Great. So um, this just to uh, so you know where it's coming from. So I'm the CEO of Data for Development. Together we with another company, we also founded the Open Data Company. And the aid information data analytics platform is the product, the first product of this open data company. So there's quite a, a bit of stakeholders involved. You don't have to remember all this, but that's some of the names you'll see. So this is uh, what we are going to be talking about, general open data in IATI, what is it, why use it. I'm going to do an introduction of the portal that we've built and what you can do there and for whom it is. And of course, we're going to have uh, question and answers, but like Marianne said, if you have specific questions in between, you can put them in the chat. And if she, you know, if it's a topic that would be interesting to discuss in the group, 
I'm very open to do that as well. I really love uh, to interact with uh, people. Uh, in that sense, doing it online is not my favorite. <laughs> uh, but of course, it is a very good way to reach out to a lot of people in, very, in, in many different locations. So in that sense, it's very good. So we wanted to do a little poll on who we have in the room. Uh, and Marianne is going to take you through and we uh, will be able to see the results as well. So it's a like of introductory um, tool. Yes, thank you, Michael. So could you please all take your phones? and try to uh, go to the www.menti.com and enter the code. This is a uh, presentation to just know a bit more about you and uh, understand where you stand regarding open data. It's going to be really quick. So uh, I will wait one minute to just see people logging in the chat i can see that six people are in seven increasing so you can uh, as soon as i will move um, slides you will also see it on your phone okay i can see people joining great you yeah, can hit the all little, the thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, you can hit yeah. the little thumbs up on your screen, on your phone. I'll wait a bit more. If you have any issue uh, logging in on menti.com, you can also enter your question on the chat. Your, sorry, your answers on the chat. You can follow it on the screen in case uh, you're having troubles. Okay, I'll wait uh, 30 seconds more and I will start the question round. Ten seconds. Come in, come in. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's start. You can still uh, join. So, okay, I'll move to the next slide. And you will see uh, it on your phone. So the first question is, what is your function within your organization? It is a free text, so you can type uh, your answer on your phone and it will appear. We have monitoring and evaluation officers, a lot at the beginning, program management, management technical advisor. Finance director. We have university students. Nice for you to join. Data architect. And program management, project coordinator. <clears throat> Support engineer, project design, country director. Okay, I think this is about it. Well, Nice to meet you all. I will move to the next question. Now, 
Now, how familiar are you with open data? So you have a scale, you can choose uh, what you feel more familiar with. So the first option is well, what is open data if you don't have uh, a, a clue of what is open data if you don't really use it. The second one is you heard of it, but you don't really use it. The third option is you have used it a few times. And the last one is you are an expert. Okay, I see you. a raised hand of Sharon Chingozo. Sharon, did you have a question of some? Oh, no, she, <laughs> it's, okay. she's gone. Oh, there's another raised hand. Abdiraman. Raise his hand. Hi, my name is Abdurrahman. Thank you for sharing us this beautiful seminar. And I would like to remind you that today is Friday and we are Muslims. We need to go to prayers after a few seconds, few, few minutes. So let the program start, please. Then we can <coughs> take as we like and then we move and we're going to come back after the prayers. Thank you. Yes. Yes, it was a bit uh, unfortunate uh, um, uh, to plan it on a Friday. I'm aware uh, that it's um, a bit difficult, but uh, yeah, there's all different religions present, I suppose. Um, I think John is recording it as well, so you can probably uh, see uh, uh, issues that uh, are re view the, the presentation and we can also share the presentation with you uh, participants um, and next time we'll do it again on a different uh, day of the week okay so we got the answer for the second question so most of the audience have heard of it but do not use it we hope that at the end of this session you will see the value of using open data um, there is also uh, people who don't really know uh, about open data, so uh, I hope also this session will be helpful for you. And uh, let's say equally, people have used it a few times, so it will be interesting to see for what you have uh, used it. We will ask you some questions later on. And three experts in the room. That's great. Okay, the, I will move to the last uh, question of this poll. So uh, what is the use of open data in your organization? So it is also a free text here. You can enter, it says no question. Uh, this is the way it is set up on this tool, but you have the free text option and you can start entering your, uh, the use that you make of open data in your organization. If you use it to, uh, for which kind of department, let's say, okay, no problem. No idea, I haven't used it. Procurement officer in a construction company, how can you use? to write quantity and quality reports, okay. Is there a difference about data and open data? Yes, there is. We will discuss it in just after this poll. We will, uh, the question is here, what is open data? We will answer it in a bit. 
how do we ensure data security while using open data for confidential information? This will also be uh, discussed in this workshop. Uh, someone say use it to enrich reports with reliable data. Great. How reliable is open data for literature review? How do we ensure data integrity? Thank you for all this interesting question. It also enables us to uh, trigger the presentation in a, such a way that we answer the question. How can I make it applicable to my project? This is also uh, something that we will see. What is mostly, who is mostly using this open data? Well, we had a lot of uh, PML officers uh, in, in the room now, in the virtual room, uh, program uh, director, finance director um, in an organization. Those are the people who are using it most, but it is also extended to donors, uh, to um, governments as well, to see what is happening on the development sector. as they are working on real estate and different commercial projects, including high-risk building and malls, to know the client actual requirement and how to make more clients. What is the importance of using open data? We will see it. Yeah. Great. Okay. Okay. I will, uh, I will, I will yeah. stop sharing, Michael. You can take over. Thank you, everyone. We will come back with another poll uh, later on in the session. Okay, I am screen sharing. But where is my presentation going now? It's here. Okay, I'm going to try uh, and demystify a little bit open data and talk you through what it is and what it is about. So basically, uh, as a definition, uh, open data is uh, data produced by any stakeholder and uh, made available for public use. So it is a sort of li public library, if you compare it with the, with the library with books. Uh, also data sits uh, in the uh, online world and can be found and reused by a lot well, by anybody uh, who has the skills to use it. And in the world of today, data is becoming more and more available, accessible, technology develops fast. So in say 20 years ago, it was only for the people who had extreme IT skills, but these days uh, also people uh, with, yeah, with just a, a laptop can use data for uh, their reporting or any other purpose. So uh, you don't need uh, to be an expert anymore. I think that's, that's the main issue that I'm, uh, I will try to put across. And these uh, existing open data sources, which I will refer to in a bit, uh, can be a key resource to generate insight and uh, access information faster than if you would have to search step-by-step uh, step or going through uh, thick uh, reports, et cetera, et cetera. So it enables you to stay more on top of events and uh, use these resources effectively to make informed decisions. There was a question on how reliable is the data? Of course, and anybody who has been searching the internet, you do need to check where it comes from and who is actually putting it online. So for example, the World Bank has a big, a huge open data uh, library uh, sitting on the internet. Well, it's, it's, it's reviewed and published by the World Bank. So it has a, a, a quality mark because of the source where it's coming from. 
if uh, a individual, uh, if you have no idea who has been publishing the data and you have no reference, you can't uh, verify the source, uh, then you, yeah, the, the trustworthiness of the data, I'm not saying it, it can't be trusted, but I'm just saying you, you just need to think about who is actually, uh, where is the data coming from? Who has published it? Uh, what is the source? And can the source be trusted? So it's almost the same again as with the normal library. Uh, you would also know if it's a, a renowned publishing house and then you know the data can be trusted. If you have no idea where the data is coming from, uh, you have to be a bit more skeptical in uh, uh, using it as a resource. But of course, it's also a matter of using some skills uh, and, and doing some verifications there. Okay. Um, why would you, in the realm where we're all working, the development aid, why would you bother with open aid and this kind of data? Uh, it can help to make a global response to poverty and humanitarian crisis more effective, more efficient, faster. Uh, it does enable uh, uh, to see quite fast uh, who is doing what, where. Uh, so in that sense, it can be a very useful resource for the type of work that all of us are doing. If uh, you use a standard for the data, the information can also easily be exchanged and harmonized across organizations. So if everybody uh, uses the same standard to report in, you can also start comparing and, and seeing who uh, is doing what. I'll talk a bit more uh, as the uh, presentation goes on. It's also a, a source of efficiency because governments, organizations can coordinate. You can actually look up who is active in which country, what kind of sectors are they working in, how much money is dedicated for that type of work, etc. Uh, so there's also this urge to be a bit more efficient in using the resources for the purposes of fighting poverty and humanitarian crisis. Uh, compliance can be part of it. There are fund uh, big donors who request uh, their fund recipients to uh, uh, report using an open data standard. Maybe it applies to some of your organizations, but uh, particularly the big INGOs. Uh, most of them have to report uh, using the open aid uh, standard and they might even get repercussions of losing their government funding if they don't report according to this standard. Uh, so compliance is also part of it. Um, let's make this. And of course, uh, it also creates more transparency for uh, in, in general, the general trend is that the public demands more transparency of government agents, but also of other stakeholders. Uh, so transparency uh, it is a real issue that will be bigger and bigger, and it can enable people also to hold actors accountable, stakeholders, government agents, etc. Uh, this is what open aid could uh, bring. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Like I said, uh, this, of course, is also our view as a, as a company, the open data company. We strongly believe that it can really help all the stakeholders to reach more impact in terms of uh, effectiveness, so available there is already project data available, so you can also improve your design on a country level, regional level, global level. It can help coordinate uh, on a more micro level in terms of, of a country or even a smaller scale. It can also help you to find partners that are working in the, in the same field as you that you might not have known until now. And uh, uh, it, it then opens doors for collaboration amongst NGOs and other stakeholders. And from a research perspective, uh, these open uh, uh, aid data can also function as databases uh, for doing research,
for on a, on a longer term basis. Um, and of course, this same information can also be used for uh, offering vital insights for the NGOs and the funding agencies on how they can improve program sustainability and also integration with other uh, programs. So I think it has a lot to offer, but at the same time, it's uh, still a little bit unknown territory. So um, yeah, there's more to be done with it uh, to really reach uh, the, the full potential. I wanted to showcase a few open aid portals to you. The links are also in the presentation, just so you get a bit of an idea. So for example, uh, the UK government has developed this development tracker. It's, an, it's uh, fully based on open aid data, according also to the open aid standard. And it gives you information on all the projects they fund across the world. So this is the homepage, you can search for a country and then see exactly what the UK has been funding. Most large international donors have a kind of open aid portal uh, and this data can also be reused for your own uh, purposes because it's out there, it's publicly available, it increases transparency and uh, well, anybody can use this type of information. There's also one uh, of US uh, aid. Um, well, as you can see, some of it looks maybe a little bit similar. A lot of these portals use a start with a global map. Also, our portal starts with a global map. Uh, the principle is the same. So, what you can see here is all the projects that US aid is funding all over the world. Uh, so, the mm, yeah, the limitation of an open aid donor portal is that most of the information you'll find there is only specific to that particular donor. So it doesn't show you all the actors that are active in a certain country. It only shows you the projects of one specific donor. Um, are there any questions thus far? Anything in the chat, Marianne, that we need to address? No, nothing in the chat so far. Okay. So that's for uh, open uh, data and open aid data. Specifically, uh, in the, uh, the, the aid sector, there is a, an uh, open data standard for aid. It's called the International Aid Transparency Initiative, or in short, IATI. And that's a standard used by uh, 1400, over 1400 organizations worldwide. And again, uh, almost all the big international donors uh, uh, publish uh, according to this open data standard, IATI, uh, to showcase what kind of projects they're doing and where they commit their money to and how they spend it. So we're going to dive in a little bit deeper into this particular standard which uh, uh, is all open data, but if you use a standard, you can compare the data across uh, projects. So that's why IATI is a very good way to harmonize the available uh, open data. And that's why we want to showcase and explain about IATI to you, because you're all stakeholders in this same field. So again, uh, IATI is a global aid standard over 1400 publishers across the world. It can be uh, a central uh, uh, way of reporting and also reaching certain goals together like um, humanitarian activities, but also the sustainable develop goals, development goals uh, are, uh, can be uh, combined with ERT data. And also IAT is a key source for mapping all kinds of aid activities around the world. So also the EU has an open data portal, which is uh, mostly based on uh, IAT data. It's similar to the UK government open data portal and the USAID open data portal. Uh, how does it work if you would want to publish according to this standard or use the data of this standard. 
So in principle, there's a, a many organizations worldwide addressing poverty, uh, humanitarian crisis, any other uh, issue that is relevant for the development world. Um, and information or data on the funding and the results of these projects are uh, published according to this EAT standard. All of these uh, published data set will have the same elements in it. We'll talk about it a little bit later. Uh, and it ends up as open data, accessible for anybody uh, to be reusing it. What is the a little bit the downside of the ERT standard that when you publish, you uh, publish use uh, as an XML, which is a specific uh, IT uh, uh, standard. And XML is in itself not as easy for people to use. So that's why um, we, for example, have created this portal. Uh, to make this XML data more available to be used by any, uh, uh, any person having a laptop, basically. So this eight information data analytics platform that we created, I'm going to talk specifically about that platform now. It's also an open eight portal and it uses uh, all the available EIT data. So it doesn't just focus on one donor showcasing their own project. It show it uh, anything published by all these worldwide organizations will appear on the platform. Um, yeah, briefly about our own vision, we want to uh, uh, contribute uh, to a more transparent world where people are empowered to use data to drive for change. And we, our mission is really to unlock the full potential of data and uh, drive change in this complex and interconnected world. So AIDA is our first uh, product specifically uh, focused on uh, the development aid sector. And basically, it's a visualization layer on top of all the available data that has been published uh, according to the IAT standard. It, it contains over a million activities, which you can uh, also refer to as projects. And uh, well, here it says 1300 plus, but actually it's now already 1400 plus. This number is growing by the week. Huh? So it's I made this presentation uh, uh, a while ago and I already have to adjust it. With this particular platform, we aim to unlock the potential and richness of all this EIT data, providing it as tooling for anyone to access it, use it, search it, and uh, also to publish uh, your own, about your own projects. And of course it has uh, a transformative potential because, um, yeah, if anybody can use this data with no extreme IT skills required or uh, all kinds of uh, additional tooling that you would need, it can really help to uh, uh, more stakeholders to uh, work together uh, on the eight interventions and do their own analysis and filter and make searches, etc., on a single platform. So what kind of data services are available there on the AIDA platform? It is possible to publish according to uh, the EIT standard. That part of the platform is a paid service. Uh, and when you uh, use the publishing feature of the platform, uh, at the same time, your data is also validated. So you'll get a report saying, if you have uh, uh, published uh, compliant data, yes or no, in terms of the standard. So it validates your data against the existing standard. So when you use this platform, you're guaranteed that the data you publish is actually also uh, uh, ready to be used uh, by other entities because it's fully compliant with the standard. The visualization part is uh, a free part of the platform uh, where all the data is just 
visualize for anybody to see and i'll show uh, uh, later on how that looks like uh, but you might also consider starting to publish your own uh, uh, projects contributing to this uh, source of uh, open aid data and that way also becoming part of the uh, EIT community and for people to find you and find the projects that you are working on in your specific uh, setup, country, regional, uh, whatever level you're working on. Um, we wanted to do a little uh, Mentimeter again. I think uh, everybody has got the hang of how that works now. So it should be, uh, we can probably go through it a bit faster and then I'll go deeper into the uh, AIDA platform and how it can be used. So Marianne, over to you. Yes, thank you, Maike. So here is the code for uh, to access the second uh, poll so again you can take your phone go to www.menti.com and enter this code i will start presenting and i will give you about uh, one minute to access the poll on mentimeter Okay, numbers, I can see the thumbs up, great. So we will have three questions as well here to understand a bit more um, what type of data you would like to visualize, what you would be interested uh, in looking uh, at. So even though you haven't used open data before, you can maybe start uh, or getting inspired of what type of data you would like to, you would be interested to look at, what could be useful for your organization. <coughs> okay, 10 seconds more. Okay, let's start. So the first question is, what type of processes do you use data for? So for the ones also that haven't used uh, open data before, you can maybe start um, uh, imagining for what open data would be valuable for you. So you, we have entered certain options finance, project performance, results, or other, uh, in case none of those options are good for you. And we can see the result here on the top, on the bottom, sorry, bottom right. So the heart corresponds to finance, question mark, perf uh, project performance, thumbs up results, and 10 other. Maybe for the one who entered other, you could write in the chat uh, on Zoom. What do you mean with other? Uh, but so far we have uh, more people using the data for project performance and results, one on finance. And then for other. Okay, I will move then to the second question. Thank you. How often do you use your data when making decisions within your organization? So again, you have uh, icons following the different options, never, sometimes, most of the times, always.
So we have, uh, the audience is quite uh, cut in half between never and most of the time. No, actually, oh, sorry, no, always sorry. and most of yeah. the time. <laughs> sorry, always. Yeah, I was reading the, the other way around. Sorry, yes. So always and most of the times. Okay, so that's a good news. I will move to the last question. And what type of information would you be interested in looking at? So basically here it's a free text. Uh, imagine you would have a platform. It can be the AIDA platform. So the, the a platform that Mike presented you, you have a lot of data regarding finance, regarding a performance overview, uh, regarding what donors do in which country. So what type of information you would be, um, you would, it would, would, uh, is isn't your the your work so in terms of your job position what could help you to perform your task better so we can you have finance performance take it So for instance, uh, some people are interested to look at information about SDGs, okay, health data, so maybe on different sectors. This is also possible on the AIDA platform. If you select a specific sector, you can have some data there. Uh, donors, yes, In indicator progress, funding opportunities, this is also possible on um, using open data and using the AIDA platform. Project impacts. So I see a lot of sector related information um, about funding opportunities, performance as well. Great. Thank you for your response. Then uh, it gives you also some insights on how to continue this presentation. Over uh, to you, Maike. Yes, let me share my screen again. Oops, oops, oops. Okay. Um, now, who can use this platform? Um, on the publication surfaces, I'm not, this is a way to publish EAT data and become part of this uh, uh, source of data yourself. So what we have developed uh, in the open data company on the platform is a way to, where you can just download uh, spreadsheets you fill in the spreadsheets with your information on the uh, on your projects, and the spreadsheets are set up according to the EAT standards. So if you really follow the templates as they are uh, set up, you can then upload it on this platform, publish your data, and your data will also be visible as valid XML in this big database. So uh, I will try to see if the video is working. It, it just shows you in a very short time on uh, how you could publish uh, to the IATI standard using this platform. Let's see if it works, including the sound. And Michael, you need to mute yourself during the video. I need to mute myself. Okay, oops, where is...
oops I didn't want to see this let's go um, escape no if you don't have a marketing system to generate Sorry, 10 guys. to 20 clients a month for your course or your coaching program you're probably making some of the mistakes that this guy's making we call him Danny the Dabbler. And we'll talk about his mistakes in just a moment. We've also got Pretty Rich Richard over here, oh. who's making $30,000 a month with a very simple marketing plan. Stop, so let's stop, talk. Stop. Sorry for that. Um, am I still on mute? No, I am talking. Okay. So this video just uh, showed you on uh, how you can publish using the platform. Uh, if you want more information, of course, you can reach out to us. We just wanted to show that it's relatively simple and making it accessible to different kinds of people. So once the data is out there, uh, who can use it? Uh, we've seen there's quite a lot of PMEL offices uh, in the room, in this digital room. Uh, so we'll also pay, uh, uh, yeah, we'll also go into your role. Uh, but of course, there's also the program manager, the person who is responsible uh, to publish open aid data and comply with donor guidelines. There can also be the fundraiser who is interested in uh, having insight into spending and performance of all kinds of uh, public funding. And the PMNL officer uh, who wants to do uh, aid data analysis and look at the performance of their own organization or maybe also of other organizations. So all these people have different roles and different interests in the same, the database is of course the same. Um, so for example, if we zoom in a little bit into the program manager, what would he or she, we call this person Tom, what would Tom be interested to look at? Uh, the countries where similar programs are happening to learn and to see if there's any collaboration possible, uh, specific activities that are implemented in a country, or also uh, stakeholders that are active in specific sectors or countries. And these can, stakeholders can be funders, but also potential partners to work with when you are implementing a program. So in, on the AIDA platform, uh, you can select a specific sector, for example, water supply and sanitation. You will see uh, uh, the period is set for 2000 and uh, uh, the period 2000 and 2021 in this particular sector. You can see it here. So this whole amount is a global commitment reported for that period. And then the countries uh, light up where that sector is relevant and where most of the money has been committed to. So as you can see over this period of time, uh, based on the ERT database, a lot of money has been going uh, to, has been committed to China and India and also Brazil. So uh, when you then click on a country in the AIDA database, you'll just get a list of uh, uh, that particular country, India. Remember, we also selected the sector of water supply and sanitation in a specific period. So the whole list of uh, 67 activities that have been implemented in India during this period will appear. And as you can see, it's possible to export this list, to print it, to change the columns, and also to search further in this list. Um, then it's also possible to look at the different tabs that are visible in this upper layer. For example, to look, this, this is the same filter used uh, what organization types have been active over the same period in this team? So then you'll find uh, different typologies of uh, organizations, governments, multilateral regional, regional NGOs, public private partnerships, or national NGOs. And uh, if you hoover over these uh, uh, groups, you will see uh, the lists, the, the actual names of the organization. On any page in AIDA, 
it's possible to either have the visualization way of presenting the data or the table. And when you press the table, you just get a list with all the information selected. And in the table format, it's always possible to also export the information from uh, the platform. Uh, I see, yeah, I see some questions. I think uh, Marianne can uh, look into it. If there's anything that is relevant for the whole group, we can uh, look into it later. So let's look at an, a different persona, for example, a fundraiser. Uh, a fundraiser would be looking at uh, donors who are funding the same type of projects uh, that her organization is doing. We call this person Vivian. And Vivian would be interested to see uh, what type of sectors are receiving funding uh, and to see what sectors uh, are the same as her uh, organization where she works and in which countries a certain donor is active. So we also made a few overviews of what could be found uh, from this perspective on the AIDA platform. So for example, you can select uh, a specific country, Uganda, and you'll get an overview of the donors active in a certain period, and also the total committed budget uh, by these donors as reported to uh, the AIDA standard. So you can see the UK government has been uh, quite active in Uganda during this period under different names, actually, because they changed the uh, name, as some of you might know. This one, XIEATEC, is actually the European Commission. They have not added uh, a name. They only use a code to identify themselves in their EAT data. Uh, the Japan, Japanese International Corporation has contributed. There's a Dutch organization called AIDS Fund, Bill and Melinda Gates. Well, uh, that one you might also know. It's, of course, quite a big donor. So. This is the visualization overview, but you can also get it out in a table overview. And you can also, of course, look at it from a different period. Uh, that is up to you how you want to set the filter. Um, if you use the tab sectors, you can actually, we're still in Uganda, still the same period, still the same amount of money committed, but now we see it visualized as in which sectors have all these uh, donors been funding in the particular country of Uganda. Uh, the legend for the sectors can be found here. So for example, this light blue is economic sectors, and then there's a general uh, uh, indication and the deeper you, or the more you go out on this sunburst diagram, the more specific the sectors uh, are indicated. Not all of the data has that kind of granularity, as you can see. Uh, so that's why the, the inner circle is more general and then it becomes more specific, but that is up to the specific publisher to decide. It's not obligatory. It's obligatory to at least include a sector, but the level of detail is uh, to decide uh, by a specific publisher. Um, also, it's possible uh, to look at a specific donor. Uh, in this case, it's, it's the Dutch Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs and what they've spent in uh, Uganda between a specific period. You can actually see there are spikes. Certain years, uh, there has been more funding going to a particular, this particular country than in other years. Uh, so this also helps you uh, uh, analyze and see the trends in uh, interest uh, of donors. And you could, of course, also um, use the table overview to get the data out. Um, let's look at this persona, the PMEL officer, and what, of course, all the other information is also accessible for the other roles. Huh? We just made uh, some personas so you can see uh, what is uh, available in uh, in the uh, database 
The m and &E officers would be interested to look at the project and the results, the, pro the progress on the results, and also the financial overviews. How is the project doing in terms of outgoing and incoming funds? And also the reporting on the results. Uh, you can look this up for your own projects, but also the projects of other organizations uh, because it's open data. So anybody can look at it. In relation to this, I would like to mention there was a question previously on how suitable is this for uh, confidential data? Well, it's not. Open data is not the space to uh, publish confidential data because anybody is able to access it. So if you have confidential information, you should not publish that on a uh, uh, open data platform or according to an open data standard, or you should anonymize the information so it's not identifiable or recognizable anymore to the level where the confidentiality uh, becomes important. So for example, in some cases, organizations publish uh, about a project in a specific country, but they don't mention, uh, they just say, uh, we work together with partner organizations and they don't mention the exact name of those partners to avoid uh, that these people get some sort of trouble with other stakeholders like the government. So uh, on a project level, so this is a specific project of a specific uh, 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 stakeholder. Uh, again, in uh, Uganda, the stakeholder is uh, the Dutch ministry again between a certain uh, period. So that's uh, so the selection is the same, but now we look at one of the specific uh, activities in the list. Oh no, in fact, it's funded by the Dutch ministry, but AIDS funds is uh, uh, implementing. We saw AIDS funds in the other overview as well. Uh, so in, in terms of this particular program, there's a total out, outgoing commitment uh, of this uh, amount. Uh, this is a summary of uh, um, uh, how the budget is now depleted until now. Uh, the total commitment that has come in, so they haven't yet received uh, uh, all the money yet, but they have uh, uh, been uh, spending and sending it to uh, partner organizations. Then there's uh, an overview of how the money flow uh, goes. So there's the, 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 this is the level where it comes in, program level, it goes to, uh, a, 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 no, it does, it comes in at an organization level and it goes to a specific program, in this case, the in INERELA, I don't know what that stands for. And then if they would have mentioned specific partners, also these partners would have appeared in this budget flow of how the budget uh, uh, follow the money principle, how the budget is being allocated. Um, there's also an overview available of different transaction types. So uh, how much uh, is actually, uh, this is all related to expenditure and how much has been uh, uh, spent on this particular uh, project. This is actually a different organization. It's a UNDP and a different program, Environment and Resilient Development. Also for the m and &E officer, um, it is possible to see the performance. Uh, performance is not an obligatory element in the ERT standard. So it's up to the publishers themselves if they want to use this element in the reporting. The financial information is obligatory, but performance is not. So not every organization will have the performance data uh, made public or published that way. But at least if it is uh, part of the publication, we will be able to visualize it. You will see the indicated description here uh, and the baseline, the targets, and how much uh, has been um, achieved until now. So in this case, 
50% of the target uh, has been achieved. Uh, the program is running is more or less, uh, this is for the one year and the program is long running for a longer period. So yeah, you would, I'm not surprised that they're halfway uh, because the program still has time to reach more progress and more uh, results. So also this overview, this visualization of the performance data is available on the AIDA platform. Well, um, question and answer. So I talked a lot um, and I showcased uh, what you could find on AIDA. Uh, we have been, it's quite, the link is quite easy. It's just aida.tools. And uh, there's a button where it says explore and you can start exploring uh, the data yourself. We have a lot of uh, videos uh, on our YouTube uh, channel uh, with explanation on how to explore, how to use the data, because we really want to make it as accessible as possible. Of course, you can also reach out to us with questions. But first, let us see uh, if there's any um, questions from the group that uh, you would like to ask. So there is a question from Alam Mohildin. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing it properly. Uh, it's, I don't know if you want to ask your question, uh, you can unmute yourself and ask it, but it's about the intellectual property right and the right of disposition of the data. Yes. To what extent we can use it. Yes. That's a very good uh, question. Um, when you start to when when you start considering to becoming a, a, a publisher using the IATI standard and making your data available online in a public domain, so it's again like a library and it's accessible for anybody to access. Uh, you would also have to think about indeed uh, uh, the, the we, you call it an uh, open data license under which conditions other people can make use of your data. So when you register yourself as an ERT publisher, you can indicate on how you want your uh, data to be used. And uh, in principle, it's always visible who is the owner of the data who has published it and you as a publisher also always remain responsible for the quality the completeness the uh, consistency of the data uh, so what we visualize on aida if somebody says there's a mistake they have to really address the person who has been publishing uh, to repair the mistake uh, because we uh, don't publish the data for them. We only visualize what they have published. So in that sense, the data stays with you and you remain responsible for it. And you can also indicate uh, how people can use it when you register as an EIT uh, publisher. But be aware, all this data is out there in the public domain. So as soon as you, it's just a very good, uh, um, yeah, it's very good to be conscious about that. So all people would potentially be able to see what you've put up there. So don't publish any uh, details that you don't want to share with the outside world. Okay, any other questions? There is also another question related to how regularly it is updated. Can, can we now take questions from my friend? We open the floor for questions and answers. Yes. All right. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, let's use this opportunity to take questions. Please, if you have a question, raise your hand and uh, we will give you a chance to ask your question. Thank you. Who goes first? Please raise your hand if you have a question, and then I will pick on you to. Uh, if there's something that is not clear, um, yes, I have uh, Alan Mohidin. Uh, please, Alan, go first. Uh, Nikron, please unmute Alan Mohidin and uh, let him ask the first question. 
Actually, it's her. Uh, I would like to greet you all and thank you for this opportunity. Uh, my question was uh, the first one that has been fully answered about the right of disposition versus intellectual property of the data being published in, on, in all the platforms. My second part uh, uh, question was um, to um, ask about the quality of data, um, whether it's going to be regularly updated uh, or that could be just the responsibility of the publisher. Uh, do you have any kind of control of the quality that's going to be published on the platform or is it a uh, publisher responsibility? Thank you very much once more. This is Ala Muddassir Mukherdin from Sudan. Thank you. Hi, uh, Ala. Thank you for your question. Uh, like I tried to explain, uh, the publisher is responsible for the quality of the data. What, when you use the AIDA platform for publishing, what we do provide is a validation to see if your data validates according to the standard. But the content of your data, for example, I'm just putting a theoretical example. Uh, if you say we received 10,000 euro and we helped 1 million people, which would be maybe a bit exaggerated, uh, then uh, uh, nobody, and we, we as a platform, will just show it as you have published it. And maybe there's other stakeholders who will also view it and say, hey, that looks a bit unregularly of what has happened in this. And they might ask you questions about it. But the quality of the data is the responsibility of the publisher. And in some cases, that's also interesting to mention, if you receive funding where you are obliged to publish according to the IATI standard, these funders usually also uh, check the data and uh, start asking you questions based on your publication. So then it really becomes important that what you publish there is uh, correct, but that remains your own uh, responsibility. Right, thank you very much uh, for that question. I had Peter Ponge, Ponge. Uh, Peter, oh, it disappeared. Anybody with a question, please raise your hand. Oh, Peter. I, I think Peter came back. He starts talking, but he's on mute. He, he's disappeared. Uh, Oh, okay. But there's another guy. That's the last oh, one. It's another guy. <laughs> oh, somebody else. Right. Okay, this last one, Kawe. Kawe, sir. Please. Uh, uh, Nicole oh, and great. Also. Hello. Can everybody hear me? Oh, yes, Peter. Thank you. Please go on. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you great. Right. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Blue. Uh, and thanks, uh, uh, Mr. Kariba, or oh, Dr. Kariba, sorry. Um, I'm Peter Fonge from Cameroon, and I work with a, a, a local community-based organization. I think I want to thank Bloom for the wonderful presentation on uh, the AIDA platform. But I was just, while she was presenting, I was wondering, and in my mind, I was like, who are those actually producing this information that actually goes to the international organizations? And I realized that a lot of local and community-based organizations are the ones actually producing this information, but they don't have that capacity to actually take it further to those kind of platforms. So my first question was, how can we make sure that it actually reaches these community-based organizations who actually they are in charge of this data to pick this information for at the level of the community and bring it to the limelight? That was the first thing. And secondly, how can they actually um, benefit from that ability because we have I'm based in Cameroon and currently we are in a uh, political crisis that has been ongoing for seven years but a lot of INGOs make this money and like 60 percent goes for their um, their admin cost why very little goes back in the community 
So working with youth-led organizations and other community-based organizations, we are looking for ways that we could actually let these community-based organizations access these fundings directly. And this data they can bring forth to guide that platform, help them get access to these fundings that can be accumulated directly. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for your uh, question, Peter. The last bit was a bit, uh, the connection was a bit um, broken, but I think the point, you, your point is very valid. Most of the data available now is actually uh, published by the big funders, the big, uh, also the governments uh, of uh, uh, developing countries providing. Uh, so it's more on the providing side than the receiving side. This, however, differs uh, per country. Huh? For example, in Kenya, there's uh, quite a number of Kenyan NGOs uh, who do publish. Uh, in principle, it is available for anybody uh, to publish to IATI. Uh, as I showed in the beginning, it's a matter of just filling a spreadsheet and uploading it. In that sense, it should not be all too difficult. But of course, I do understand that if you don't have uh, IT means available, it might be uh, more difficult. But maybe if you receive some funding from uh, uh, a donor, you could start this conversation with them also. Like, uh, I want to, I want to be transparent. I want to be visible on this platform, or maybe do it as a group of community-based organizations. So also your uh, uh, activities become visible uh, to a larger public in your own country, but also internationally. And I think what is still good for you is to look what has been published or uh, by others uh, in Cameroon, because that information can be useful for you in a specific sector, for example, I, we looked at water, but it can also be whatever, uh, infrastructure or something else. Uh, so you can find out uh, who has been active in these uh, sectors and maybe approach them for your own projects. Uh, so it does work again as a, as, a, as a resource, as a source for you of information on who is active in Cameroon. Uh, yeah, but the, the, the fact that smaller organizations will have uh, maybe less means to publish, that is, uh, that is still a concern. And yeah, I, we, I, we can't solve it, we only provide the toolings, but I think it would be an interesting uh, conversation to have with your colleague, CBOs, colleague, NGOs, and also maybe your local government, because there's also quite a number of African governments who also have their open uh, aid portals where they publish about how they spend their money. So, I mean, it, it, it is a, a, a trend that is uh, starting. Right, thank you very much. Uh, Maike, let's have um, um, Waswa Kawe, Kawesa, please uh, unmute Waswa Kawesa, Hassan. Alisa, please go. Kawesa? I think we lost him. Kawesa, if I, are you there? We lost him. Let's have uh, Abdul Latif Adam. Please unmute Abdul Latif Adam. Hello. Yes, proceed with your question uh, or comment. Uh, uh, thank you for your presentations and, and giving me the, this uh, opportunity chance. Uh, I am Abdullah from uh, Al Sudan. The, the main or uh, the, my question is say that uh, uh, I would like to know the things that uh, led me to, to, to make reporting for the monitoring and uh, evaluation activities. This is the main question, sir, because I would like to know to answer it uh, or, or to know the answer of that or the things that led me to uh, write report in the MNE activities. Uh, this is one question. Thank you so much.
Are you hearing? Yes. No, I'm. I'm thinking um, of how to answer your question. Um, so basically, on the platform, you can find a list of activities. If you click on the uh, performance, you will see what people have reported on in relation to that specific activity. If you want to use it for your own reporting, you could uh, uh, get the publishing services, fill in the spreadsheet and upload it. And your data will also become visible on the platform. Uh, it's it's a matter of uh, uh, looking on so looking around on the platform uh, uh, and get yourself familiarized uh, on how to use it, uh, and then you will be able to see the same as uh, as I've shown. It's not difficult. Eh? It's more a matter of like yeah, walk, walking around and uh, orienting yourself, clicking here and there, and you'll be able to to find the same information. Right, thank you very much. Um, do you have another question? Anybody with another question? I can't see another question. Um, or if there are no questions, then uh, I will ask uh, Maike to give. Uh, oh, I have uh, someone here called uh, Wedjan Sabri. Sabri, please. Um, Nikra, please uh, unmute Wajan Sabri to ask a question. Hello. Yes. Um, I recently joined like two minutes ago. Um, we have a bad electricity. So um, can you guys email us the recording later to our emails? Yes, um, we will try, but uh, the we normally post uh, the recording on our uh, YouTube channel. Check uh, Strategic Netherlands YouTube channel. You find uh, this video by the close of the day today, and you find lots of other videos we have recorded. They're about okay. Uh, can you send? And, okay. But we'll send you the link by email. Thank you. Yes, please, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There was someone else with another question. I've seen a hand up. Please raise your question. If there's no other question, then I'm oh, seeing someone, uh, Ablatif Adam, and my unmute Ablatif Adam. Nikron, unmute uh, Ablatif Adam. Yes, uh, so sorry for the you second know? time. Uh, yes. uh, uh, the, the, my second question is uh, says that, uh, what, is, what is the importance of the uh, indicator in the M and E? I would like to, to know the, how, how the, 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 the importance of the indicator, indicator in the ME. Thanks. Um, I don't think I fully understand your question. The importance of the indicators of the ME. Oh, can, maybe you can elaborate. Oh. Are you still there, uh, Abdul Latif? Um, I think he's asking uh, what's the importance of uh, indicator in uh, m and &E. And I'm thinking indicator is uh, outcome or output indicator. So that something has happened. Something has happened uh, in, in the, during the intervention. Uh, I think that's the question he's asking, uh, and of course that will obviously be represented in uh, in data. Uh, that yeah. something has happened, whether it's in numbers or in uh, outcome indicators. Yeah. Yes. That you can expound. Yes. Uh, in the presentation, we showed the performance uh, element of the IATI standard, where you can indeed uh, uh, view the indicators of different types. It can be output indicators or outcome indicators. Most of it is actually quantitative uh, data. It is possible to use qualitative indicators as well, but it's not um, 
well, most of the publishers do quantitative where you can actually uh, measure or follow the performance that people have reported on. So a target is reported and then the progress against the target in relation to a specific uh, indicator. I hope that answers the question. If you will see the presentation again, uh, you will probably have a bit more time to look at it uh, and then understand. Okay, I think we we ha do have quite a lot of questions. Suddenly, no, I don't know. <laughs> let's yeah. take uh, let's take those four that are uh, whose hands are up. Uh, there are five, and then we close. Laurent Musoya, please go next. Uh, please unmute Laurent um, Soya. Just those five, and then we close. Okay. Um. Hello, thank you. Actually, I don't have a question, but I was interested about um. Abdul Latif was um, asking. So I was interested also to help him for more information about ME uh, reporting and all that. If he can reach to me, I can, I can support on that. Thank you. Ah, okay. You can also answer him uh, from here so that everybody else has a chance to learn, please. Uh, Laurent is gone. Okay. okay. Um, Sorry. Yes, please continue. Yes. Uh, his Just question was uh, that everybody else gets to learn. We are well, all here for learning. Well, uh, great. So his question was um, about the importance of indicators on uh, projects or program or in the reporting. So in short, indicators um, uh, uh, the, is a very important component in the uh, logical framework. Uh, which help us to measure our results chain. Um, when I say the result chain, it means uh, from the basis of um, uh, impact of the project, uh, outcomes of the project, as well as output of the project. So whenever we are doing, we want to measure ourselves and see if you're progressing uh, towards the targeted uh, uh, reach or whenever it's, um, it's the, the change that you want to make in the community against what was planned. So indicators help us to measure ourselves and see how much we have uh, progressed towards uh, reaching the target. And as well, indicators can tell us uh, to what extent that we have not produced the, uh, the required quality. So it's not on, always indicators are quantifiable, some they are uh, concerned about the quality of um, results that we we tend to uh, achieve. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is well expounded. Thank you. Let's have another question from uh, John Otaro. And meet John Otaro, please. John, please Hello. go. Yeah, yes. good morning. Good morning to you. Yeah, so I just want to make an inquiry. Um, aside from, from uh, sending the link for this uh, webinar, um, I was wondering, will, will there also be sharing of the slides from this uh, discussion, please? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we can if uh, we can share the slides with uh, John and he can put it on the same uh, LinkedIn place so you can relook at the slides uh, and have access to all the information we just shared. I think that's a great idea. Fine, I will share with all the participants. Thank you as soon as we receive it. Yes. Thank you. Um, success, Harris. Oh, the numbers have increased. Uh, success, Harris. Please go next. Okay. Good morning. I'm Success Harris from Liberia, and uh, I came in a bit late. Uh, I just want to make a reference uh, to the presentation that Makori just said uh, to understand the uh, presentation because I came in late. I would like for the presentation again to be uh, shared with us so we can have a hands on. And again, uh, for the MAE uh, thing, it's kind of new to our country. We are, we are not into 
uh, MAU fully. Uh, so uh, we need to have our hands on to have an understanding, but it's good that it's good that uh, we are in, uh, you have done a presentation and we'll go over it. But I advise, my recommendation would be that the, uh, this program should be extended to other African countries like Liberia. Mm -hmm. I think uh, success is inviting us to Liberia, John. Are we open to that? <laughs> yes, yes. It's, 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 we, this, this country need, need uh, people, yeah, such a program. We really need such a program. Yeah. We are now, we are now into, into MAE, and MAE is the way to go now in the world. It's very key for any project. We manage, a, we're managing a project here is resource base. Yeah. And, it's a new thing. So the MAE is key to the resource base or around the world. Yes. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, we would like to be part of this uh, yeah, organization to really help this country in terms of monitoring evaluation. Sure. Like uh, we have always said, um, MAE is the most important uh, function in development work. It's the uh, most highly paying uh, career in development work. If you have a group of, uh, of m and practitioners and you want some support, please let us know and we'll send support to your country wherever. We are, we are ready to go to Afghanistan or to Liberia to give you support. So let us know uh, when you are ready and we'll come to uh, where you are. And thank you very much. Uh, let's wind up. Uh, uh, Harris, 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 Urhak and Abdurrahman will be last, then we, we close. Uh, it's Friday. I know people need to start their weekend. Um, and I must say, um, we'll plan this session again next month if Mike agrees, because uh, Friday was a very good day. So do this again. But uh, for now, uh, let's have Harris and then Abdurrahman Mohammed, and then we'll give uh, Mike uh, an opportunity to uh, wind up. Harris, go on, please. Harris, I think we've lost him. Okay. Harris Ulhak, please unmute Harris. Yes, uh, am I audible now? It's fine now? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, Hi, this is Haris and hope everyone is doing well. Uh, I'm from Pakistan and I've been working as an IT support engineer for more than four years now. Uh, I have a few questions. I don't know, uh, might be are they relevant or not, but, um, and secondly, I would just want to make sure that today is Friday and we have to offer some prayers. So that's why uh, we have to leave the meeting uh, for the certain period of the time. So uh, should that complete uh, presentation will be available for us or not? Uh, that's the first question. The second is that uh, is IDA, um, that platform is uh, having some charges as well, or uh, we have to pay something to avail their services. Secondly, um, as uh, uh, I think that uh, I just said that uh, we have to upload the spreadsheet or the sheet to get the visualization of the data. So while making that sheet for the data visualization, should we have to maintain some standards so that properly uh, the data is maintained and properly visualized on the platform? Uh, secondly, does that platform is providing any sort of support to the customers if they have some query or they are finding difficult to difficulty in using some sort of uh, option in that particular uh, using that particular platform? I hope am I clear? Yes, you are clear. Uh, we will share the presentation. We will do it uh, via the LinkedIn page of Strategia Netherlands, where you all signed up for this uh, seminar and the presentation will be available there as well. Uh, so that's the first one. Uh, this, uh, the, um, any, the exploration part of searching and filtering the data is for free. We offer that for free. The publication surfaces using the spreadsheet is a paid service which you can uh, obtain you from the platform. So it's a, a, a SaaS uh, solution. 
the spreadsheet templates are also on the platform so the the spreadsheets tell you how you should present your data to enable a proper conversion of the data into the xml standard so that is a guided uh, process and if you need additional help it's also possible to reach out to either the help desk or to buy a, a, a support package to help you get started as an eat uh, publisher. So I think that uh, those were all your questions for now. All right. Uh, we have to close this. I see so many questions are coming up. Um, Abdurrahman Mohammed will be the last one, please. Um, it's Friday. Uh, unless uh, Mike agrees, we continue, but uh, let's take Abdurrahman Mohammed first. Please go, Abdurrahman. Thank you, Mr. John, uh, the host of this program. I would like to thank you first. Then the second, the time is a little bit running and my question is concerned about you. And since in the most African countries have natural resources and uh, they are the ones who are suffering the most, like some crisis, food shortage, and many more other crises. So my question is how we can eliminate the property and how we can rely on our natural resource and live on the funnies and the others like Aedes and more about it. So my question is how we can eliminate the profits. How you can eliminate the progress? Profit, profit like hunger or humanitarian and other crises. Mm. That's my question, and I guess it's like more about the topic. So that's my question. Thank you. If I would have the answer to your question, Abdi Rahman, I would be non-human, I suppose. I would be a super, <laughs> uh, because yeah, we all of us try to combat uh, these uh, crises. Uh, and, I, and you are completely right that uh, the African continent is uh, even suffering more. Climate change, uh, um, yeah, abuse of natural resources, etc. But uh, yeah, it's a complex uh, question to answer, uh, and we probably need to. Uh, that's a different discussion, I would say. I think transparency can help at least in the terms that. Uh, you can hold people accountable, they publish, they say on the platform what they have been financing, and you can hold them accountable and approach them and say, okay, you said you did this and this, but I can't see the result in, the, in practice. Can you please, uh, yeah, you publish something in the newspaper or, or something like that. So transparency can help to hold actors accountable but it's not the solution eh, to all these huge problems no it's a small step thank you i think we are thank you very much for that question i think we are uh, done with the questions so michael we give you um closing remark and we have a pitch anything you'd like to say then uh, we can uh, close for today and I'd like to assure uh, the participants that um, the recording will be on our YouTube channel before the end of the day. Check our uh, YouTube channel, Strategy and Excellence, and there are lots of other recordings there on um, project management, water and sanitation, um, proposal, proposal writing and fundraising. Uh, so visit your, the channel and uh, subscribe so that when we upload new content, you'll be alerted. So make it go, please. Thank you. And thank you very much for the honor. We all agree partnerships is the way to go, and uh, we we'll certainly do this thing this uh, again next month. It's very very helpful to uh, our MNE community. Thank you. Yes, well again, thank you so much for your participation, your questions, your interaction, um, and uh, indeed, there's a. Uh, a lot to be shared. This whole issue of data and open data might be uh, quite new to some of you. So I'm really uh, open to have more discussions, more presentations, 
facilitating more meetings and guide you through on a more detailed level as well, uh, which we might be able to do next time. Uh, zoom into a specific country so you can see uh, what is happening there. Uh, that can also be an example. So it was a pleasure being here. Uh, I hope it did uh, at least uh, spark your interest uh, to take the first steps in this direction and that it can also strengthen your M&E uh, work. Like somebody said in the, in the poll we had like to enrich your reporting. Uh, I think that that can be, um, should be uh, uh, doable uh, to having some graphs included and, uh, and something like that. So hoping to hear from you and don't hesitate uh, to reach out uh, to us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any closing remark from uh, Marianne? Uh, it was a pleasure as well to hear from you and to see uh, the importance that you give also to open data. We are available for any question uh, at the email that I will put just in the chat now. So don't hesitate uh, to reach out to us and we'll be glad to continue this conversation. Info at aida.tools, I just put it on the chat. Thank you very much. All right. Um, so from this end, we'd like to thank everyone for participating in this session. And um, if you have any questions, you can uh, send the question to, to us or uh, to uh, Open Data Company. The address is there, info at aida.tools. Please send an email there if you have any questions. You can also send an email to info at strategianetherlands.nl. And we thank you very much for participating and for your questions. And uh, let's keep strengthening uh, m and &E in our work so mm -hmm. we can uh, uh, get the desired uh, results. So from this end, thank you very much. Have a great weekend and uh, let's keep talking. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. demands for well-trained personnel. At Capacity Africa Training Institute, we have been leading the charge in changing Africa's fortunes. We are the leading development company in Africa, offering institutional training solutions and online and distance learning in business, development and humanitarian courses. Over the last 10 years, we have trained over 10,000 staff from NGOs, governments and the United Nations in Africa. Our catalogue consists of over 200 career-focused online courses to choose from and registration for diploma and postgraduate courses is now open for the following courses. Postgraduate Diploma in Monitoring and Evaluation Postgraduate Diploma in Water, Sanitation and Hygiene Diploma in Community Development Postgraduate Diploma in Strategic Planning and Management Postgraduate Diploma in Grant Management Diploma in Project Management Diploma in Nutrition and Dietetics Diploma in Gender and Development Diploma in Leadership and Management Diploma in Finance Management for NGOs and many more We have also partnered with the European International University to offer an Executive MBA Once you register, you will have access to our team of experienced trainers and specialist consultants who will guide you on your course whenever you need them the cost for diploma courses is 800 US dollars, while postgraduate courses cost 1,200 US dollars. The cost of a one-year MBA course is 1,500 euros. Visit www.capacityafrica.com for more information. 
Are you interested in building a career in the development and humanitarian sector? Then, Strategia Netherlands is the best option for you. We offer training solutions to the United Nations, governments, NGOs and other development organizations worldwide. Make your online application now for Diploma in Monitoring and Evaluation Diploma in Grant Management Diploma in Conflict Management Diploma in Disaster Management Diploma in Water Sanitation and Hygiene and many more. The cost for diploma courses is 800 euros while postgraduate courses cost 1,200 euros. Visit www.strategianetherlands.nl for more information. Bye-bye, everyone.